Hi everyone. Welcome to this discussion of the hagen posse equation. I wish to discuss the factors which influence the flow of a liquid through a tube and how this equation relates to the everyday practice in veterinary medicine. Interestingly, Hagen in 1839 and Poisset in 1838 both experimentally derived this equation independently. This equation cannot be overstated enough, since the implications of this equation can be observed with every anesthetized patient. Firstly, we must appreciate that there are a number of assumptions with the hagen poisset equation. This equation describes the flow of a liquid through a circular tube only. The flow is laminar, and the fluid itself is a Newtonian liquid, for example, like water and air. Even though blood is not a Newtonian liquid, its physical characteristics are sufficiently similar to water that blood is assumed to be a Newtonian liquid. A Newtonian liquid is characterized by the linear relationship between the velocity of the liquid and the local strain rate. That is to say, the way the liquid deforms with changes in velocity. A good example of a non-Newtonian liquid is a mixture of cornstarch and water. This mixture becomes thicker as the velocity of the liquid becomes faster. The objectives of this webinar are to improve your understanding of the factors which influence the flow of a liquid through a tube and how these factors will influence the practices of everyday veterinary life. So what is laminar flow exactly? As you can see by the diagram, laminar flow occurs when there are concentric layers of a liquid which slide over each other. When you measure the velocity of the liquid across the cross-sectional area, you'll observe the maximal velocity at the center of the tube and the lowest velocity at the periphery, where the interactive molecular forces are at their highest. Supposing we have a tube of a certain radius and length as represented by the letters R and L respectively. The driving pressure of the liquid through this tube is calculated by the difference in the pressure between the ingress point and the egress point of the liquid, i.e. as signified in this example as the difference between P1 and P2. Let us consider each of these parameters separately and how each will influence the flow of a liquid through a tube. What is the effect of increasing the pressure differential on the flow of a liquid through a tube? Now imagine that P1 is increased, but all the other parameters are the same. Using your intuition, what do you think the effect will be on the flow? Is this relationship directly or indirectly proportional? Pause the video now and formulate your answer. As the pressure differential is increased, the flow will increase in a directly proportional manner. Let us now consider the effect of changing the radius of the tube on the flow of a liquid. Imagine now that you have a tube with a non-radius R. Keeping all the other parameters the same, you double the radius of the tube. As you can see, this doubling of the radius does not simply double the area of the new circle. It will increase the cross-sectional area by a factor of 4. When you consider the change in the volume, the increase is by a factor of 8, since all three dimensions are increased by the same factor. The velocity of the liquid will also double because of the reduced strain rate at the center of the fluid column. This effect will further increase the flow. When you consider this, it is obvious that the relationship between the flow and the radius of the tube is exponential. In fact, the flow of the liquid is proportional to the radius raised to the fourth power. If the radius is doubled, then the flow is increased by a factor of 16. The second dimensional factor that will influence the flow of a liquid is the length of the tube. 
If the length of the tube is doubled, what will happen to the flow? You may now pause the video so that you may reflect on this question. You may use a real world example of where you are breathing through a snorkel. Why is it that the length of a snorkel is of a standardized length? By increasing the length of the tube, the resistance will increase as a linear function. There is now more interaction between the liquid and the surface of the tube. Thus, as the length of the tube increases, the flow through the tube will decrease. So far, we have considered the physical characteristics of the tube and their pressure applied to the liquid. We have not considered the liquid itself. The ease at which the concentric layers of the liquid slide over one another is described as the viscosity of the liquid. Viscosity is denoted by the Greek letter eta. By increasing the molecular interactions of the liquid, the viscosity will be increased. This will make it more difficult for the liquid to deform, i.e. to flow through the tube. Thus the velocity will slow down. You may pause the video now to contemplate the relationship between the viscosity and the flow of a liquid through a tube. This relationship is quite intuitive, especially when you consider the comparison between water and honey. The flow of a liquid is inversely proportional to the viscosity of the liquid. So in conclusion, the pressure differential, the length and radius of the tube, and the viscosity of the liquid all influence the flow of a liquid through a tube, as described by the Hagen-Poisset equation. Changes in the radius of the tube will have the most dramatic effect on the flow of a liquid, since this is an exponential relationship. This has many clinical implications. For example, using the largest intravenous catheter possible, the fastest flow rate of fluid therapy may be achieved. The hagen poisset equation describes how the flow is the product of the pressure differential and conductance of a liquid. Conductance is represented here by the letter G. Conductance is a description of how easy it is for a liquid to pass through a tube. Conductance is inversely related to the resistance to flow. As you can see, the hagen poisset equation can be used to describe the relationship between cardiac output and mean arterial blood pressure. I hope you now appreciate the importance of the Hagen-Posay equation.